Top headline everybody's talking about today, former Trump advisor Steve Bannon arrested on fraud charges in border wall fundraising scheme. <laughs> former White House chief strategist Steve Bannon was arrested on charges of defrauding hundreds of thousands of donors through his Build the Wall fundraising campaign. Bannon and three others were indicted in a federal investigation in the Southern District of New York. Prosecutors allege the four defended, uh, de four defrauded donors by raising more than $25 million to build a wall along the southern border of the United States. But some of that money was used for personal gain. Oh, shocking. <laughs> you don't say. Now, turns out, that, I mean, if you really want to get into this story, there are a lot of fun wrinkles to it. One of them is that one of the main co-conspirators is uh, a disabled veteran who is missing his legs and an arm from, uh, try, I believe it's Iraq, might have been Afghanistan. Uh, but the, he's he's really uh, hmm, turned his ability to play the victim and pull on the heartstrings into a lot of money, $25 million, and a lot of it clearly used inappropriately. This is not just a political witch hunt. Really, in terms of fraudulent fundraising, this is a, a pretty cut and dry case. Of course, we'll wait, you know, innocent until proven guilty. But I will say that these people are definitely guilty of at least trying to do something unethical, even if they succeeded in doing what they were saying they were doing as a, in, an organization without the element of fraud, because putting up a wall to impede people's freedom of movement on the basis of a government border as opposed to private property borders is fundamentally unethical and a violation of human rights. And it's a violation of my human rights as a property owner here in the United States to say, I don't have the right to invite whomever I want onto my own property, as long as they're not violating anybody else's property rights. So there, there's another story that's an interesting follow-up to this from AP News. With ban and arrest, Sovereign District sends another salvo. And I saw Sovereign District. I was like, wait, 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 wait. There's a Sovereign District in the United States where people are, like, free from control of the federal government. And uh, not exactly what they're talking about here. So uh, just to start the story, a couple of paragraphs. If the recent firing of the top federal prosecutor in Manhattan was intended to quell criminal investigations into President Donald Trump's close associates, as some have accused, Federal prosecutors in New York appear to have missed the memo. Thursday's arrest of Steve Bannon, Trump's former chief strategist, served as a stark reminder that no one who has been within the president's inner circle is automatically immune from federal scrutiny. Bannon, 66. All right, so then it gets into the uh, case of helping build the president's cherished southern border wall. Now, what's, what's funny about this is that one of the things they used to, to raise the funds was you know, uh, well, hey, Congress won't give Trump the money, so we have to do it ourselves. So many problems with that statement. But the point about the prosecutors here is that you do have supposedly, I mean, it's it's sort of like mafia infighting, right? And what they're presenting this as, for people who believe in the general mythology of statism, is that, you know, if uh, you have an you have a sovereign district. You have independent prosecutors, and they can hold government agents accountable. Well, yeah, competing crime families or factions within a mafia organization is really a more accurate way to describe what we're seeing here. And and you know, I don't care to get into these stories too much. I don't want to get into the deeps of palace intrigue and Trump drama. Uh, no, uh, you know, just because you know, you have orange lips doesn't mean I care about your personal life. And when you're talking about Donald Trump's associates getting caught, there's another person that they're uh, hmm, kind of alluding to in this, right? Of course, my friend Roger Stone and the story from The Independent. By the way, I'm going to stop using The Independent. They have their, their ads aren't just intrusive but really obnoxious and they're selling the ad free experience here the headline from independent.co.uk karma is a bitch although you know what i'm i'm gonna go ahead and straight up say we should not support the independent because 
they were afraid of the B word. <laughs> yeah, it's B asterisk, 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 asterisk. I mean, it kind of hurts my brain to read that. Like, look, we have to censor ourselves. We can't put bitch on our own website. Oh, really? Are you afraid that people in the comment section would use it to describe your editorial board as a bunch of bitches? Roger Stone re responds to Steve Bannon's arrest. That's right. Roger Stone came out and said karma's a bitch because Bannon actually testified against him in his case. And Roger Stone got his sentence commuted, not pardoned, but his sentence commuted by the president, which actually, I have to say, uh, smart move by, by Trump on that count because he could have, uh, you know, he, he could have waited until after the election. But then Stone would have already been in jail for a couple of months. And he's on the older side. And, you know, who knows? Who, I, I, think, I think Stone's overplaying his weakness there. I'm pretty sure Roger motherfucking Stone, even at his age, could handle himself in jail. And, yeah, hey, Corona is the excuse for everybody to do what, you, what, what they want, right? You want to print more money to steal it from the American people through inflation? Go ahead, government. Another $9 trillion in liquidity. You want to make people uh, comfortable hiding their faces uh, in public so you can traffic kids more? Hey, have at it. You want to use it as an excuse to sit at home on, on government handouts and not work? Go ahead. There's so many things. Uh, and if you're, if you're Roger Stone and you want to use the coronavirus as the excuse to not go to prison, please use it. And in that case, Roger Stone uh, is uh, successful in his, in his effort there because Donald Trump did commute his sentence, which just means he doesn't have to go to jail. And for Donald Trump, just in Corona, this is, no one has come out and really, really been able to blast Trump for commuting Stone's 40-month sentence. Like, justice is not served by this you know, political criminal. I don't want to even say white collar. Is he a criminal? He's charged for lying to Congress, which you should get a medal for, of course. Anyway, back to this story. This is why it's interesting watching this drama from a distance. Karma is a bitch. That's Roger Stone on Steve Bannon's arrest. And again, like, see, Roger Stone, I think, is like one of these mafia family members who's trying to get out. You know, in his interview that he did with us, uh, was it the week before last on, on uh, anyway, you go look it up. Uh, he, he actually came out and said the only reason he is supporting Trump is because he commuted his 40 month sentence, which is to say, if I didn't have a personal immediate stake in this, I'd be supporting Joe Jorgensen. And now when we see the, I mean, if, if you don't like the mafia, right, if you don't like organized crime, you got to cheer enthusiastically every time you see them fighting amongst themselves because if they if they're successful enough they'll all be dead and then we'll all be free <laughs>